So this will be the last question in this exam hack series where we have hacked this pure maths paper one AS level exam. We have really hacked this exam. We have gone through each individual type of question and we have pulled it apart and we have said what are they asking and how are they asking it and we've looked at each of those questions and really understood it by looking and analyzing so many past papers in these worksheets of each question there's so many past papers that I've looked at and so many questions that I've looked at that after you've taken this series and got to this last video you will have an unbelievable grasp of this exam and when you sit it you might even start laughing because it will be so easy. And I've made it in such a way that it will last a while, years and years. So anyone taking this even in the future, this will still be very valuable and very valid for you sitting this exam. So let's jump in to this last question. And this is the arithmetic and geometric series question. And like all past videos, I've made a worksheet outlining what is an arithmetic series and what is a geometric series. And then we've split it up into two types of way of asking. And they can ask it in a mathematical style or they can ask it in a real world example style. And that's the two types of questions. So we've got all those mathematical styles of asking on these arithmetic and geometric progressions. Um, you've got 10 past paper questions there and then you've also got these real real world style questions where they you know they give sort of an example um, and you also have to use these series and then you've got all of my answers there for you so 15 questions all answered for you so make sure to download that and I'm saying that the crux of this question is these um, like a lot of the questions is these um, equations so understanding these equations so for an arithmetic series all it is is that each each um, element of the series is just you add a difference to it so your first one your second element a simple you add what add a D which was what they call add a difference to get between each successive terms um, and for the and you should already know this and for the geometric series it's the same, but each successive term is actually times by some ratio. So there's a common ratio between successive terms. Anyway, we're just going to do a question in each of these, the mathematic style one and the real world style one. So let's do that now. Okay, so for this first question, we are said we're given a, so let's go A here. So we're given the third term is equal to a third and the fourth term is equal to 2 over 9. And it says find the sum of an inf of the infinity of the progression, sum to infinity of the progression. So it wants us to find this. And like many of these questions, they give you some initial things and they ask you to find something else. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to make sure to write out your... Uh, sum to infinity progression, which I should actually have, but we can always just look here. So this is your sum to infinity progress, uh, equation here. And so what do we need? We need our u1. So to find the sum to infinity, we need u1 and r, and we have to figure out how to find those. Well, we actually do have a uh, we can already get our r because the r is the ratio, the common ratio. So simply our uh, u4, so our fourth uh, element divided by our third element equals our r. So this will simply be 2 over 9 divided by 1 over 3, which is 6 over 9, which is 2 over 3. So our r is 2 over 3. And then to find the u1, what we do is we can simply, we well, we know this equation here. If you look on, we know that our un equals a r n minus 1. So our un equals a, which is our u1. I like to call it u1. You can call it a if you want, r n minus 1. So for our u3 term, this is u1 times r n minus 1, which is r 
squared. So this is going to equal to our u3 is 1 over 3. And our u1 is what we want to find. And this is 2 over 3 squared. So this is going to equal to u1 of 4 over 9. So we get 3 equals, we get 1 over 3 equals u1 times 4 over 9. Times by 9, we get a 3, u1, 4u1. So our u1 actually equals 3 over 4. So now we have our u1 and we have our r. That means that we can find our sum to infinity, which will be 3 over 4 divided by 1 minus 2 over 3. So this is 3 over 4 divided by 1 over 3, which is going to equal to 9 over 4. So our sum to infinity is 9 over 4. So that's your answer. So that's A. Now B. So B. A circle is divided into five sectors in a way that the angles of the sectors are arithmetic progression. So they always tend to give you a question for geometric and then a question for arithmetic. And given that the angle of the largest uh, sector is four times the angle of the smallest, to find the angle of the largest sector. Well, so that means that we can say u1 will be our smallest, the first element of the series. And then we'll say our u5 will be our largest. Well, it tells us that four times our smallest equals our largest. And it also, it's a circle. So that means the sum of the f all of the five terms is going to equal to 360 degrees. So we have two relations here and like before it wants us to find what u5 is. So always I recommend well what do we need to find u5? So let's write out an expression for u5. Well, We know that in a uh, arithmetic series we have if you look at your formulas um, here your un equals this so u1 plus n minus 1 d. So our u5 equals u1 plus 4 d. So in order to find our u5, we need to find u1 and d. Okay? So we can do that. So, or we can just find our u1. It doesn't actually matter because u1 is related to u5. So we can sub in our. Uh, 4u1 here. So we get 4u1 equals u1 plus 4d. And then we get 3u1 equals 4d. So we can say our d is equal to 3 over 4u1. And that's important because now we can get another relationship. So we know that our s5 is equal to, and we look at this other equation here, sn is half n, so half of 5 times our 2u1 plus uh, n minus 1, n minus 1, which is 5 minus 1, so it's 4d. And this equals 360. So we have one equation involving u1 and d, and we have a second equation involving u1 and d. And when you have two equations with two unknown variables, you can find each of those variables. And that's actually really important in these in these questions. So here we can just say this is 5 over 2 of 2u1 plus 4d, but we can just substitute in here our d, 4 times 3 over 4u1, and that equals 360. We can times by 2. So we get 720. And then we can divide by 5 here. And then we get 2u1 plus 4, so these cancel, 3u1, which is just 5u1. So we get 5u1, which equals, well, if we just go to our calculator here. So we've got 720 divided by 5 
here and then we divide that so that's 144 144 and then u1 is going to then equal to 144 divided by 5 so that equals 28.8 degrees so from that we can then find because we've found our u1 we can then find our u5 so therefore our u5 is equal to four times this so again we can just get out our calculator we go four times oh four times twenty eight point eight so one hundred and fifteen point two degrees one hundred and fifteen point two degrees and that's your answer so the key there is just to say okay what do we have and what do we need because we have an equation for the sum and we also have an equation for each element and from that we can get two relations two different equations involving d and, and u1 and from that we can find u1 and then find our largest angle okay let's move on to the real world style question um so a water tank here holds 2000 liters when full and a small hole is ba in the base gradually getting bigger so that each day a greater amount of water is lost bit of a weird example but still an example okay so let's do I on the first day after filling 10 liters of water are lost and this increases by 2 liters each day so it doesn't say but that's actually an arithmetic series so our u1 here will be 10 because on the first day we lose 10 liters and then our D will be 2 because it's getting 2 liters bigger every um, every day so on the second day it'll be 12 and 14 etc so a here how many liters will be lost on the 30th day well on the 30th day u30 is just going to be u1 plus remember again this is just from this equation here plus n minus third i mean th wait, what is it 30 minus 1 which is uh, 29d so we just substitute this in we get 10 plus 29 times 2 which is 68 right so it's 68 liters so u30 equals 68 liters so that's how many liters are lost on the 30th day i mean it's a pretty powerful thing you know just from this we can figure that out so then the tank becomes empty during the nth day after filling find the value of n so after n days 2000 liters are lost so we wouldn't want to find un we actually want to find the sum and the equation for our sum is this and you'll see by doing lots of these questions that they're essentially always asking similar you to use the same equations this is n minus 1 d well so the sum which means the sum of all of the terms up to a certain point so like the sum of s3 would be the sum of the first term second term and third term so we want to know after how many ends how many days will it be completely empty well it's when 2000 liters are lost so this is half n so we can just times actually 4000 of 2 uh, u1 which is 10 plus uh, n minus 1 times 2 okay so let's just simplify this we get uh, n times n 20 plus 2n minus 2 so it gives us n 18 plus 2n so we get 2n squared plus 18n minus 4000 equals 0 we can divide through by 2 if we want minus 2000 0 and then we just substitute this in uh, minus 9 plus or minus the square root 9 squared minus 4 1 minus 2000 over 2 1 and I actually did this beforehand and I think you get you get n equals like 40 point I think 1 5 or something so that means that it says when will the tank at what day 
after filling all the tank become empty. Well, on the 40th day, it's still not empty because of the 0.15. So we can say, because it's like individual numbers, one, two, three, and can't be 1.5. So it's on the 41st day when the tank will be fully empty. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then finally here, our II. Assume instead of that ten liter. Assume instead that ten liters are lost, and the amount of water lost increases by ten percent. So now it's a geometric series. So find what percentage of the original two thousand liters is left at the end of the thirtieth day after filling. So again, we're going to want to find the sum of thirty, but this time, our uh, so and our u one is still ten. But now we're dealing with a geometric series and it's saying that the amount of water loss increases by 10% each day. So the common ratio between the terms of the, how much water is lost every day is going to be 1.1. So you have, we want to find what S30 is and then we can find how much percentage of water left from 2000. So and our U1 is 10 and our R is 1.1. It's 1.1 makes sense, right? If, it, if it's increasing the amount it's lost by 10% every single day, then times it by 1.1 increases it by 10%. So 10 the next day will be 11, you know, increasing by 10%. Okay, so our S30 equals, well, we just go on our, here. So SN is, that so it's u1 of 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r just double check make sure yep and in this case our u is that u1 so we get 1 minus 1.130 over 1 minus 1.1 1 minus 1.1 so if we plug this in to our calculator so we do 1.1 to the power of 30 equals, and then we do that minus one, gives us that, times 10, gives us that, and then we divide it by negative 0 0.1. So divide it by 0 0.1 equals that. So this gives us an answer. If you plug it into your calculator, you get an answer of 1,644.9, 1,644.9 liters. So the total amount lost after 30 days is 1,644, but the percentage, so the percentage of water left will simply be well, will be our 2000 minus 1644.9 divided by 2000 times 100. So this will equal to, if we plug that in, 2000 minus our answer equals that divided by 2000 times a hundred. Oh no. Hate this calculator. So seventeen point seven five percent. So it's seventeen point seven five percent. So that's your answer of the percentage of water. So we've done two questions there real quick. A real they only ask in these two ways, the real world example, where they ask a real world style question, or they can ask you in a mathematical way. And I say the most important thing uh, for this is to just, what are you given? What are your equations and what do you need? You see, I write down what I'm given. I write down what I need and what the equation that will get me what I need. So then I know I need U1 and R for this so I can find my sum to infinity. And that's a common theme through this uh, arithmetic and geometric series question. That's all from me. Make sure you download this, work, download this worksheet go through all these past paper questions which I've all answered for you and that's the end of this series and I'll be doing future exam hack series on different exams 
in the future. But I'll see you in the next video.